Hi everyone, Chad here with DT Swiss. Today we are going to go over the bearing service of a Star Ratchet hub. What you see in front of me, I have some bearing installation cylinders, our ring nut removal tool. I have a tool that helps protect our axle for when we're removing the bearings. I have our hub seal setting tool, some 6902 bearings that's going to fit the 350 hub that we're working on, and some different kinds of grease, Star Ratchet grease and general assembly grease a soft blow hammer, and we have our trusty vise that we have aluminum soft jaws mounted into, and we have the wheel that we're going to be servicing, a 350 hub with an XD driver on our nice XM551 rim. So let's go ahead and jump into this and get started. I like to start off by removing the non-drive side end cap first. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lock that into the vise. Quick note, you heard me say about the soft jaws. It is critical to have some type of a soft jaw on your vise. The steel jaws that are standard on a vise could mar up the end cap. So we like to use just a nice aluminum soft jaws on there. And you don't need to go wild with crushing the end cap. You just want it to be snugged in the vise and you just want to lift this wheel up off of that end cap like so. So once that's off of there, we can go ahead and remove that non-drive side end cap and put it off to the side. As you can see now that non-drive side bearing is exposed and the inner axle as well. Now for the drive side with the free hub body. When we remove this end cap, which is held on by a small O-ring inside of there, you're going to see that the star ratchets and the spring and everything else will be exposed. So we're gonna go through and just lock that end cap into the vise again. What I like to do is lift a constant pressure on the opposite side of the wheel and then just come through with the butt of my hand and give the wheel a quick hit upward and that will pop that end cap off of there. So like you're gonna see, I'm just lifting slightly and then I just pop that upward and in doing so, release the drive side end cap. So we have our XD drive side end cap on this 350 hub. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the XD free hub body, star ratchet free hub body. Our first bearing, or our first star ratchet spring, sorry about that. Our star ratchet plates themselves in this 350 hub, we have the 18-2 star ratchets. We're gonna remove the bearing spacer sleeve and we're gonna remove the last star ratchet spring. So now we are down into the hub and we are ready to start the removal process of the ring nut. I'm just gonna sit my wheel off to the side and get my ring nut removal tool into the vise. So the thing to note about the ring nut removal tool, on two of the sides, you'll see there are machine flats halfway up the tool, and on the other side, you'll see the machine flats are machined all the way up to the splines. On the removal process, we wanna just go ahead and lock that tool in the, the machine flats that are halfway up the tool. So you wanna go ahead and lock that into the vise nice and secure, and you wanna make sure that your vise is securely mounted to a, a workbench. In doing so, we're gonna take this wheel and we're going to put the drive side axle through the tool and engage the ring nut with the tool. As you can see, it slides right into the splines. We're going to be doing a big left-hand turn. So in removal of this, it might be very tight because of pedaling forces increase the tightness of the ring nut. So you might require additional assistance in this. This wheel, again, is brand new, so it's gonna be very simple for me to remove that ring nut. So again, a big left-hand turn, and you'll see that the ring nut will break free, and then it'll get a little bit of resistance. That resistance that I'm feeling there is the actual ring nut extracting the hub seal. Once that comes off of there, I'm gonna just spin that out, and now we can go ahead and remove that off the tool. First, I have the, the hub shell, the, the hub seal, sorry, and now I didn't fully remove it, but I'm gonna just remove that off of the wheel. As you can see, we took the ring nut out and we have the drive side bearing exposed and ready to be removed. Just gonna sit the wheel off to the side again and show you on the ring nut removal tool. I have the ring nut and I'll pull that off of the ring nut removal tool and inside of that ring nut, we have the shim washer. That shim washer might remain in the hub attached to the, non, attached to the drive side bearing. So just keep, keep in mind that you do wanna remove that. Now we are ready to remove the non-drive side bearing. In doing so, I am going to use our axle protector tool. It goes in the axle so when I strike the axle, I can drive that bearing out the non-drive side with the axle. 
You don't necessarily need to use this tool, but it is if you do have our service kit, it is recommended that you use this tool. Anytime that you strike an aluminum axle like this, you definitely want to protect the axle and also have a soft blow mallet. So I'm just gonna put that tool into the axle and again, we're just gonna drive that axle and the non-drive side bearing out the non-drive side of the hub. Go ahead and set the tool down. As you can see, the bearing and the axle will come out. There's one used bearing. Now the internal axle comes out. I'm just gonna take it, flip it over, and reinsert it back through the drive side bearing. We are going to repeat that same process, but now I'm gonna take the bearing installation cylinder and actually put it in the hub to help protect the hub. And I'll use the axle protector again to protect the axle, driving that bearing out the drive side of the hub. So now you can see I have the other 6902 bearing, which are in the 350 hubs, the internal axle, and a completely empty hub shell of bearings or anything else. What you wanna do now is just go through and wipe the hub out completely of any old grease and debris. So you just saw I'm just wiping out the bearing faces to get make sure that the bearings can seat flush next time around. And also I wanna wipe out the threads of the ring nut. So now that that is completely wiped clean, I'm gonna go through and just take some new assembly compound grease, or assembly grease, sorry, and we're just going to go through and put some new grease on those bearing faces. So a little bit of grease on that bearing face, bearing seat, a little bit of light grease on that bearing seat, and then I'm also gonna apply grease on the threads of where the ring nut goes into the hub shell here. Set that wheel off to the side and wipe my hands off of all the grease. Now we are gonna go ahead and start the installation process. I'm gonna put one of my 6902 bearing holders into the vise. I am going to take my internal axle, wipe it clean of all the old grease that's on there. If you'd like, you could apply a little bit of uh, new grease just to maybe help the bearing slide on. Put that into there, into the installation cylinder. We're gonna take the wheel, put the axle through the, the hub and slide the hub down onto that installation cylinder. And we are going to get one of our new bearings ready. So you see that it looks like I have two different bearings here. It is the same bearing, just one side is orange, the other side is black. We want the colored face, we want the colored side facing outward. This does have a little bit better sealing mechanism against the elements. So you do wanna have that pointing outward on there. So again, the black side facing inward, the colored side facing outward. As you see, I just put a little bit of light grease on there. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that over the internal axle, get my other 6902 installation cylinder. And then you can see on this one, I have a little bit of axle sticking out the top. I'd like to just go through with this, another cylinder and protect that axle. I'm going to hammer this in until I hear a nice, nice thud where I know the bearing is fully seated remove the installation cylinders, and now we can go ahead and flip the wheel over and repeat the process. So once that is down there, we're gonna go through and grab our new bearing, a little bit of grease, put onto that new bearing, slide that over that internal axle, again, the orange side facing outward, and our bearing installation cylinder for 6902 bearings. And again, just listening for that nice thud where it's fully seated. Go ahead and remove that tool off of there. And now we can go ahead and remove the wheel off of the installation cylinder. Right now I'd like to just spin the axle, make sure I, I don't feel any roughness or any grittiness. Also, I like to just shake the axle to make sure there's no play, both in and out and side to side so that it feels nice and smooth, ready for the finish of the installation of the star ratchet mechanism. So now I just sit that back on that installation cylinder. It's kind of a nice working platform for me. And just go through real quick and clean off all these parts before we go through and reassemble them back onto the hub itself. So just wiping all these down. Now we're gonna go ahead and just sit the ring nut tool into the vise. And we mentioned before we have two different machine flats on the ring nut tool. We wanna make sure on the installation that we drop the ring nut tool all the way down to the flat. So the splines go all the way down to the vice face. And in doing that, I'd like to take the ring nut and put it down on top of that tool. Before I do that, 
I'm going to go through and apply a little bit of light grease to the ring nut threads. Again, we do not want to use any locking compound on here. This does get tightened with pedaling force. And you can also take the remaining grease and put a little bit on that shim ring. Just like to point out real quick, the ring nut of the, of the DT Swiss hubs will have a small indent to one side of it. It's critical that that indent goes on the inboard side of the hub. The flat face would be facing outboard. If you look at it, that tool will fit the ring nut will fit down on top of that tool and then your shim washer will drop right into that recess that's on there. Now we're going to come through and take our wheel and just slightly gently put that down, the axle down through the tool. And what I like to do is just give the wheel maybe one or two spins just to engage that, the threads of the ring nut. And you can see how close it is to the vise. What we do now is just lift that tool up, spin it 90 degrees to the wrench flats that are machined only halfway down now you can finish tightening the ring nut down and you'll see it will all of a sudden just hit stop once it's fully seated after that's in place go ahead and remove the ring nut installation tool and i like to go through and just take the hub seal now and go ahead and install it you'll see with this hub seal it does have a metal backing to it that metal backing needs to be faced in towards the hub. The rubberized part of it will face outboard. We're gonna take our hub seal setting tool. The indent the, catches the lip on the inside of the hub seal and one of our installation cylinders and finish setting it. Again, you just listen for that nice little dead sounding thud when you know it's fully seated. Remove that off. I like to go through once I have the assembly lube ready to go and just give every all the mating faces a light coating of just general waterproof grease. The bearing spacer sleeve, give that a nice coating of grease. The other spring of the star ratchet. The mating face of the Freeha body that goes into that rubberized seal. It's nice to put a little bit of grease on there so you won't get the, the little squeak that would happen with the dry seal. I like to put a little bit of grease on the face of that outboard bearing and a little bit of grease on the face of the end cap that touches that outboard bearing. I'm going to go ahead and close up the assembly grease and I'm going to open up our star ratchet grease. You can see this grease does is a different color. It is a red kind of orange grease and I just like to apply a thin coat of grease onto the mating faces of the teeth of the star ratchets. We do not want to use a lot of grease in this part of the uh, the hub too much grease can cause issues with the hub engagement so again we want to just apply a very thin coat of grease on there if you could see that's about the most amount of grease that you want to see in our hubs so now that everything is ready to go i'm just going to start the assembly process we're going to take our first spring and drop it onto the hub key note about the springs the smaller diameter portion of the coil does need to be touching the ratchet plate so if you took these, you would picture these like quickerly springs on an axle. So the smaller coil would be facing inward. So we would want these to look just like this. So again, that smaller coil touching the back of the ratchet plate. So we could actually take that and just put this first spring down onto there. We're going to put our bearing spacer sleeve, drop that onto the axle, slide it down. We're going to take the two star ratchet plates. They could go in either direction as long as the teeth are mating one another. Put that on there. And then again, the last spring, we want that smaller coil touching the rat back of the ratchet plate. We are going to go with the Freeha body now. There is a center sleeve in that Freeha body. Sometimes you could use your pinky and line it up if it gets off centered. Drop that down onto there. And what I like to do is just spin, spin that backwards, make sure there's no binding, you're not forcing anything. And then our Drive side end cap comes and locks everything into place. You'll hear it kind of click into place there. Now I'd like to just flip that over, grab the non drive side end cap, press that into place, and you are ready to ride. If you have any further questions, please visit our website at www.dtswiss.com.